I'm in the middle of a load of laundry. Yes, I do that for my wife because there's no point of her having to walk up and down the stairs since I'm down here all the time anyway. So, I just got done talking with Mike Lee from Precision Colors. We discuss, of course, what do we talk about? We talk about this, this system, the ink level sensor system. And I realized I made a big boo-boo. Eh, not a huge boo-boo, but a really dumb one. So the way that you connect the two boards, let me move this out of the way here. It's very simple. You do it by series. So you're gonna power this one, and then you have a cable running from this connector to the equivalent connector. Well, I had them connected to the middle because I thought, well, this is a shorter distance. I can use more of the length of wire that was provided for me. Then I realized, no, I have to actually wind it around from here, out here, and then under the lid. And I realized, well, there doesn't seem to be enough wire. Maybe I'll tell him that he needs to provide a little bit extra wiring. And he said, how did you connect that? And I said, I connected it to the inner. No, he says, no, to the outer ones. Yes. So see, even the great Jose, yeah, the legend, right? Makes dumb mistakes. So make sure you connect your boards to the far left connector on the left board and the far right connector on the right board. And remember that the wires are slightly different length. That allows you that extra bit of loop that you need to insert it into the upper and the lower. So then you get a very nice even bend. As you can see right here, that's why they are slightly different length. Okay. That also struck me as weird. I thought, hey, Mike, come on, that looks sloppy. No, it was planned. It was planned that way. Now, normally we are going to go ahead and proceed. I have a few more cartridges I need to set up and then we're going to print some black and white images. I'm gonna use black and white mode because I wanna use up the five ml extra ink I put on that gray tank. That gray tank originally had 20 ml. I used that tank to calibrate my other one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sensors so that they detect 20 ml. They'll either go on or off if I just tap them, okay? And so the next thing I'm gonna do I have 25 rather than 20 loaded. I discussed that in my last video. We have some paper loaded. I'm not gonna do it tonight. I'm gonna do it live so that we can catch that light as it actually gets triggered. It'll get triggered up here. We're looking for the number four position from the right to light up. These three do not have sensors connected to the cartridges. So they're going to be on. The ones that are off, have sensors connected to the cartridges. Okay, the other cartridges, they have full loads of ink, except for these right here that do not have a sensor. Those are not modified, and I'm not going to modify them. I'm gonna leave them undrilled. You know why? Because as of this moment, PC is working on a new refilling method that will prove to be a lot easier for most people. People may have a problem with that pressurized method where you pressurize ink in, you create a vacuum, pressurize more ink in, and so forth until all of the 80 ml of ink are in the cartridge. Well, you may run into problem with that if you make a mistake because you really don't know exactly how many ml of ink you have in your cartridge when that light sensor goes on. So you think you're gonna inject, say, 60? 60 plus 20 is 80. And what if you make a mistake and add a little bit more? You're going to attempt to pressurize more ink than the cartridge can hold. And remember, liquids cannot be compressed. So when you remove that syringe or bottle with the tip attached, just like the video that Mike Lee has on his channel, you will be splashed in the face with ink. We don't want that to happen. So we want a more passive method of refilling. And he's going to create a specialized refilling tip. Okay, and this is how this will work. We know that we will need at the least 55 ml of ink. The sensors are gonna come from him 
pre-programmed to detect around 20 ml, just like I have mine programmed for detection of about 20 ml of ink. Meaning that when one of these sensors goes out and goes on over here, the corresponding light goes on, they will turn off here and go on here. I should have about 20 ml, give or take one or two ml up and down. So I know that I can safely put in, say, 55 ml. I need to reach 80 around there. Okay, so we we just don't want a geyser of ink because you're doing this kind of blindly. Okay, now the ones that I have holes in, I'll just continue to use those. I'll just load the correct amount of ink and I can pretty much assure myself I will not get bathed with ink. I will put in a little bit less ink than I actually need. I will have 20 left when the light goes on. I can safely add 60 really because you can actually put about 85 almost 90 ml of ink in that tank you don't want to do that because you want to maintain a bit of an air gap inside that cartridge but regardless the second method is going to be very simple the construction of that single outlet valve on this cartridge we'll take a little bit of a look at it right here it has a dual action type valve. It pushes in and then ink can be let out as the printer demands it. Okay. The printer will not be demanding ink constantly, only when it needs to. That plunger is depressed or the poppet valve is depressed via a spring and it can deliver ink to your printer. Well, if you have an empty cartridge or a partially full cartridge, say you have 20 ml left, you want to put 60. So you load up a syringe with 60 or a bottle with 60 with this tip. You insert it. The tip will depress the poppet valve and the tip will be configured so that I can actually allow ink to dribble out the sides and literally enter passively into your cartridge. It will be like pouring ink in if you were able to do so. That's what's going to happen. The original tips that we were using actually seal and so you have to use that pressure system to be able to put ink inside a closed container basically so this will allow you it'll be a looser fitting tip all you're doing is depressing the puppet valve open and then the sides are going to allow a little bit of a cascade of ink if you will to enter and fill up the internal compartment of that cartridge what you want to do is do this very, very slowly. Okay, I don't know what kind of rate we're going to be able to get out of this refilling method. It's going to be about the same rate as, say, refilling a Pro 10 cartridge where you're dribbling ink into this exit sponge. It might be that slow. Who knows? It might take you two to three minutes to fill a cartridge back up. Anyway, that is the big news that we have at this point. We're going to continue. People are asking, when is this going to be available? Should I buy a Pro 1000? I'm on the fence right now. I'm ready to pull the trigger. If you really want a Pro 1000, buy it. Because you're, you're not going to really be doing this for quite a while. Until your cartridges actually go empty. And you can then disable ink monitoring. Then you can start refilling. And you don't even need this at that point yet either. Okay, you can actually practice your refilling method. Make sure that you always, since you're going to run empty, okay, the chip's going to say I'm empty, the cartridge is going to actually be empty. You will be able to load a full load of ink. And at that point, you can begin disabling your channels one at a time and print, okay? And then you can weigh them at 32 grams. They are empty. So anything above that, you still have ink left. So whatever you wish to do, you can install this even before that takes place. doesn't really matter. But I just suggest, you know, get used to your Pro 1000. Don't wait until this is available if you really want to buy a Pro 1000, okay? Get them now while they are available. I don't know what the future is going to be. I don't know what Canon has in mind as a replacement for this printer. We have no clue. No news. I mean, they are as tight-lipped as anything. All right, so that's basically it. What do I have now? I got a full yellow one filled. It is modified for refilling through a hole. So I have ink in my yellow, my PC, my blue, 
my photo black and my matte black. The rest have already been disabled. These have not. So the chips are actually at the low setting at this point. And I think one of them has single use chip attached to it. So it's showing very high levels. So I gotta wait, I don't wanna waste my chips. So at the point where these single use chips go empty, that's when I will then go ahead and fill them using this new method, hopefully, and attach a calibrator sensor to it and ready to go. By that point, we should have all 12 cartridges running on these sensors. So probably, We'll see how I feel tomorrow. We got to do a lot of yard work and also do some tree cutting. Not, not big trees. I'm talking that big around. I have a chainsaw. We're going to go ahead and do some tree cutting, maybe burn some wood and enjoy the relatively nice weather we've been having lately. So again, like I said, I have 13 by 19 pieces of paper loaded. We're going to start running some monochromes. Use up that 5 ml of gray ink and we'll see that light coming on. Then I will remove the cartridge, remove the sensor and weigh it. We'll see if it weighs the proper amount indicating there are 20 ml of ink inside that cartridge. I want to be able to get that triggering at a very accurate level. In other words, it's not going to be absolute, but it's, it has to be something that you can then relax, lay back and enjoy because you know you're not going to get into trouble using this system all right so before this goes out as a sale item it has to be tested till the cows come home so you got to have patience out there okay and also some of the components that you may need such as the cable management clips you can get those on amazon i will have links on my affiliate page that you can order from again it really really does help the situation with the cabling all right thank you so much don't forget to subscribe share and like and not this sunday but next sunday mike lee will be back on the live stream that will be possibly the 27th i'm not absolutely sure i don't have a calendar in front of me but two weeks from now so make sure you join us that weekend because we're going to then be discussing probably the final aspects of this nice setup i'm thrilled to have this folks so again happy printing everybody bye-bye